Hello and welcome to another What Is presentation. In this particular case, it's a little bit different. So what are ArcSight user roles? This is something I've been asked uh, multiple times and, and I'm trying to define, and of course it varies by organization and structure and operator and so on, but I want to define and use some words and phrases that how we describe how users use the ArcSight system. In this particular example, it's going to be pretty generic, but I want to walk through some scenarios and some situations of how people would interact with a solution and what their particular roles would be. So let's just refresh our minds for a second. When we talk about ArcSight, it's a it's a number of components. There's the, the ArcSight data platform from a collection and distribution. There's ArcSight ESM from a correlation point of view. There's uh, ArcSight user behavior analytics and DMA and so on. So there's a number of components there with regards to how you physically interact with the system and the various components. So I'm not going to talk about those and the user interfaces and so on. I'm going to talk about the roles and how they would operate within a particular ArcSight deployment. So I've used this slide before, but it gives a good illustration of, of who will interact with which systems and typically where. I'm not, like I say, I'm taking this generically, so I'm not referring to a particular product. What I want to do is indicate that there are different types of users. So in this case, we can see we've got different security analysts level one, security analyst level two, and we've got a hunt team as well. And we make a differentiation of that. Now, it could be the same person, it could be a mixture of roles. It doesn't matter, but I want to show that the, there are separate roles here, typically to carry out activity. So in this example, we can see some data is being received. We're looking at that and doing some contextual correlation using a real-time correlation engine. We're generating some alerts, and those alerts are going onto the SOC workflow. The level one security analysts will do their initial triage. So these are the analysts that are using the ArcSight platform. Typically, it's going to be ArcSight ESM, but they're using that to identify and we see those alerts coming in and they do that initial triage. As part of that initial triage, they're trying to identify whether this is real, accurate, and whether it needs to be investigated further or whether it can actually be closed here and then. Now, to give you an idea, we typically talk about that initial triage process carried out by those security analysts level one. We talk about that typically occurring in three to five minutes with correct contextual information presented to them as part of that correlation alert, for example. They should be able to make a decision and, and ascertain how much additional effort would be required to understand understand what the true context is, what needs to be done. Does it need to be investigated any further, for example? So they can make that a, a determination whether it's a genuine real incident and therefore needs to be put through the incident management processes and so on, or whether they can actually just do some basic investigation and make an assessment and close it, for example. So that leads on to the next stage, which is once they've done that initial triage, then that, if we want to, and, and it's something that is regarded as an incident, we can hand that to the level two analysts. Remember, the, the L1 analysts are typically working on a time frame of about three to five minutes, typically, it's not enforced, but typically three to five minutes to do that initial triage. And they're focused on a quick turnaround. Can we, can we process this? They are not focused necessarily on completing a full incident management process and investigation around this particular alert. What's actually happened now is that that's been handed to the level two analysts who now are in a position to do some of this. So they're now carrying out a much more detailed investigation. They're trying to understand what is actually going on. Now they're driving the data. We understand something has genuinely occurred. We know that because the level one analysts have done that triage. Now we're trying to understand what is actually involved. What's the contextual impact of this? Is this against critical systems? Is this something we need to deal with now? Now, or is this something that we can prioritize accordingly? What's the blast zone of this particular incident? Is it affecting a large group of systems, machines, and users, or is it just affecting a very small focused area? That level of investigation, now we're into minutes to hours worth of investigation that they're going through. And of course, Ultimately, this could be non-ending. You know, a security incident is not a break-fix scenario. If something's broken, we need to fix it. An investigation could take some time to follow.
follow through. And we've seen that within uh, scenarios where customers have been breached. It can take weeks to months, in some cases even years, to complete an investigation and understand the full context of what's going on. But this is level two. Now we're doing that investigation. So these are the users that are typically driving and understanding data, uh, searching across that, uh, understanding the impact, how does that relate to other systems and devices. And, and then ultimately they, they're responsible as part of the investigation and incident management process. But of course, as part of this, there's another team involved in this, and that's the hunt team. Uh, some people refer to it as different uh, naming, phrasing, level three, I don't know. In, in our particular breakdown of just a very simple scenario, we're calling it the hunt team. The hunt team typically is not directly linked to the level one analyst. As you can see through the arrows here, they are responsible to try and identify and hunt unusual activity, uh, previous threats, and things that they don't un are currently unknown. They interface with the level two because the level twos are carrying out some investigations. And as part of that investigation, they might look and say, I think this is suspicious. I'm going to hand it to the hunt team to carry on hunting to see if this is real or not. But as part of my investigation, I need to deal with what's here and now and get that resolved. So you can see there's an interaction between these levels. Level one typically works on about a three to five minute initial triage of an incident or an alert that's been received to ascertain whether it needs further investigation or whether it can be closed. Level two analysts typically then pick up that, that uh, determined uh, particular threat, attack, alert notification, and then follows it through from an investigation point of view to start to understand and triage to understand the, the blast zone, what's impacted and so on, and then whether it needs to go into an incident management process. And then finally, there's this uh, additional layer of hunting for unknown threats that typically comes as information that comes out of the level two analyst, but also the hunt team will be feeding into those level two analysts saying, well, now we think we've found something. You, know, you as level two analysts, you run with that and see if you can find something else. So it starts to give you an idea that there's different roles within, this, within the SOC environment and how you would interact with the ArcSight solution. Level one analysts will typically look at the active channel around alerts, typically looking at uh, cases and doing that initial triage. Level two analysts, again, will be looking at things like the cases and looking at the details, but then using additional tools and technologies like visualization, like the ArcSight ESM console and some of the visualization that's provided there, even resorting to searching across the data using things like the active channels uh, and also the logger search capability. And then finally, the hunt team typically uses their own tool set to hunt through that data and typically through their own security data warehouse technologies. So that just gives a quick overview, but let's go into a little more detail around some of the stages of how things could occur, just to show some of that flow with a little bit more around some other aspects of the people who would interact and operate within the, the ArcSight environment. So let's just assume that we're seeing some network activity, we're seeing some firewall data, uh, we're seeing some data that's been correlated on ESM, so specifically on ESM. That then is uh, interacted to uh, with the, the level one analyst, Remember, they're doing that initial triage, three to five minutes. They're then handing that to the level two analysts who, in this particular case, say, for example, they identify there's a real case. It needs to be handled by an incident handler who can then run with that and process that accordingly. So they'll take that incident. They'll hand that to the incident handler. Typically, that's part of your incident handling process. Now, note, this incident handler is probably not using the ArcSight system. They're probably using their own incident management system to ensure that they're tracking and tracing everything. And in a lot of cases, they'll actually be talking to the network and system and application owners directly and using that information, you know, who did this? What does this mean? What does this particular uh, activity on this particular application means? And they'll iterate through this uh, escalation incident handling process until they can get to a point where the case is closed. But as typically the level two analyst who's running with the actual uh, analysis and doing the investigation, they will identify something and go, you know what, I've identified some activity which is suspicious. And as part of this activity, I'll feed that back through to my platform engineer. Note, there's a new person involved here. Just I want to illustrate this. This is somebody who is typically creating content for the ArcSight environment. They're, these are the people that would be creating rules, dashboards, reports, and so on. 
and putting that into the system to help further detection and to perfect the, the correlation and the information that's coming out from the notifications and the alerts in the first place. But note, the engineer is not the level one analyst. And there's a very good reason for this. Now, I know it varies according to uh, customer and business size and investment around the number of people that use the system and so on. And that's okay. I get that. But and typically, a level one engineer will not be uh, writing, sorry, level one Typically, a level one analyst will not be writing rules. In fact, they shouldn't be writing rules. Remember, a level one analyst is looking to do that initial triage of an event in three to five minutes. Human psychology says if you allow somebody who's doing that kind of intense monitoring to define the rule set that they are going to be responsible for, they're naturally going to reduce the rule set. They're going to reduce the efforts and the actual events and alerts created. It's pure psychology. You want to have this as two separate roles. You want to have a level one analyst that's looking at the rules and identifying those. And you want to have a separate person that's doing the engineering around the, the actual rules that's creating those alerts in the first place. If it's the same person, that becomes a risk that you start reducing your detection levels to make it easier for that level one. We don't want to do that. We want to have a closed loop that we can ensure that we're doing the right detection and we can optimize around that, but it should not be the level one analyst that's doing those rule creation. The level two analyst helps and guides that uh, content creator, that engineer that's creating the rules, because they've got a much better understanding of what's actually occurred, what's actually a threat, the feedback from the incident handler that says, mm, yes, that really was an incident, and yes, this is what's occurred. They can then feed that back with information into the content engineer who can create the rule set to identify it for the next time that it should occur. The final type of user here is the business owner. Now, typically the business owner, in most cases, will not be accessing the ArcSight system. I'm, I'm showing it here, but so here the, typically the, the business owner is not accessing the system directly, but what they're doing is using that and managing the environment, ensuring that they can have some metric information, that they can track what's actually going on, and that they can ensure that the system's producing some accurate levels of detection ongoing protection and incident handling. It shows here accessing the system directly, but typically that's not the case. But here we've introduced this additional content engineer, administrator, whatever we want to call that, but typically it's a separate set of roles. So ultimately we've defined a number of roles here around who uses the ArcSight system. So we've got a level one analyst, we've got a level two analyst, they're typically users. We've got a content engineer or administrator of the platform itself who's accessing the system. Maybe even the business owner themselves are accessing it to get some metrics and dashboard information. Typically, the incident handler isn't, and they are interfacing with the level two analysts. And ultimately, the network and system and application owners of the data that's been generated and collected as part of the process are not accessing the system either. Again, if you own an application, psychology says you want to you don't want to be highlighted as, as somebody that's that's being susceptible to attack we don't want these people to be accessing the system to hide anything as well so we need to be very careful of the user roles here too just finally going back to that original view a second remember we've got these levels interacting with different systems now i've focused on these types of users here specifically but of course there are other users who integrate within the security operations center directly that won't even touch arcsight components as well as i mentioned their hunt team typically is going to be using some sort of security data warehouse and their own particular tool sets and data science for identifying those unknown threats so it gives you an illustration of the typical roles and users within an ArcSight environment and what that means and how they would interact with that. That's the end of my uh, another one of the uh, What Is series, and I hope that's been useful for you. Thank you very much.